Getting started with Docs Teach, this session will focus on finding and saving primary source documents. The National Archives has over 16 billion records. These are items created by or collected by the government in the course of business. Among these records, you can find paper documents, photographs, audio recordings, video recordings, posters, and, and so much more. Millions of these records are digitized and available on our online catalog, and then to streamline the process of finding primary sources for the classroom and to provide resources for sharing these primary sources with your students, we created docsteach.org. Primary sources on Docs Teach are, have been chosen by the National Archives education team that correspond to topics we know educators are, are teaching in history and civics classrooms, and we're always adding more. Anyone can search for primary sources on Docs Teach. However, if you create a free Docs Teach account, you can save and organize the primary sources you find into folders. Then you can share those folders with your colleagues and with your students or plug them into teaching activities. We're gonna get started today with a simple keyword search. So I'm currently on the docsteach.org homepage. I'm going to click explore primary sources. From this page, we could start browsing by historical era, starting with revolution in the new nation, up to contemporary United States, 1968 to the present. But I'm gonna start with a search and let's just use World War I as an example. As we can see, we have over 706 or over 700 documents show up for World War I. Let's click on one. Uh, to check it out. At the top, we'll get the document title. Then we'll see uh, an image of the document. We can really zoom in and take a closer look. If the document has multiple pages, you'll be able to navigate them here. And then you'll see some background information available on this document. Now, for this particular document, a transcription is available. Uh, not all documents have transcripts available on Docs Teach. It's an ongoing process. We're always adding more. But in the case of this one, we can see the transcription uh, and also share that with our students. As we scroll to the bottom of this document, you'll find information on where this document came from. It's from the records of American expeditionary forces from World War I, the National Archives identifier. If you click on this link, it will take you uh, to the National Archives catalog. Uh, and here's the full citation uh, that you can copy and paste this uh, as well. You'll also see a note about the rights of this document. In most cases, the documents you find will be in the public domain, things created by the United States government. There are a few exceptions in our holdings. And if there is an exception, you'll find that noted here. Let's scroll back up to the top of the page and head back to our search. I wanna show you a couple of ways you can narrow down your search. You can modify your search by historical era or document type. So for example, we could pull up photographs we have in our holdings related to World War I. Or we could remove that filter and focus on video recordings. Opening a video recording, you'll find a uh, video player where you can view the video in Docs Teach, and also a link back to uh, where you can find it in the National Archives catalog. You can also refine your search by uh, artwork and artifacts, posters, maps, audio recordings, uh, and so on. You could also choose to do a more specific search. Let's say you're looking for World War I records related to uh, women's roles in the war. So if I just do a search for, search for World War I and women, make sure I clear that filter from before. I'm going to find a variety of documents that come up that start to tell us a little bit more about women's work in the war, including uh, work in the the Red Cross, uh, petitions for women's suffrage that discuss uh, World War I, uh, and, and, and so much more. Or you could also search for a specific document. So let's try a search for the Zimmerman Telegram. 
So yes, we have the Zimmerman telegram. We also have uh, the decode worksheet for the Zimmerman telegram and uh, the telegram with the translation. So let's check out this document. Again, we can see we have multiple pages available. In some cases, you'll find all of the pages of a document available. Sometimes we'll have select pages from, uh, from longer documents available on Docs Teach. We also have some options for if you want to save this document for later. If you click the star button, you can create a folder and save this document for later. Uh, you can create a new folder or simply add it to your default folder. I'll show you where you can create new folders uh, and rename your folders in just a moment and where you'll find this document after you save it. You'll also see the option to download this document. This will download all document images into a zip file that you can then use to share with your students or use in a presentation. You can print this page or you can use the plus sign to add this document to a teaching activity. Looking at the individual pages of this document, you could also download the individual image files or add individual pages to an online teaching activity. Let's find out where we can find our documents after we save them. To access your saved documents, you will go to Menu, My Account, My Documents. And on this page, we'll find the documents that we've saved in our default folder. Now, if you'd like to create new folders, if you scroll down to the bottom of this page, you can create a new folder. And you can organize your folders any way you wish, whether it's by subject matter, uh, class periods, whichever makes sense to you. You can also uh, select documents from a folder and choose to move them, uh, to remove them completely from that folder. If you want to delete a folder, you'll need to make sure that your documents uh, are completely removed from a folder you've, re you've created, and then you'll be able to delete your folder. You can also choose to uh, share a collection of documents with your students, with your uh, fellow educators. You can do that by clicking on the link icon next to your folder name. This will give you a link that you can copy and share. And uh, this way you can share a, a document set uh, with your students. You'll also see an option to rename your folders here. The National Archives has incredible resources for, for teaching history and civics. So it's best to get started by trying your own keyword searches. Uh, you can also search for specific pieces of legislation, Supreme Court cases. You can do a search uh, by type of document. Uh, we have thousands of petitions for and against all sorts of topics, uh, issues, pieces of legislation that are great uh, uh, for bringing in multiple points of view on an issue into a lesson. Uh, you can do more of a thematic search, do a search for checks and balances to find uh, documents that help illustrate uh, that big idea from the Constitution. Another great place to get started is to check out our popular topics pages. If I click menu, popular topics, I'm going to click see all. You can find these curated collections of primary sources that you can share uh, with your students as well as teaching activities from the National Archives. So for example, if we click on Amending America, this is a popular topics page we created in conjunction with an exhibit at the National Archives. You'll find collections of primary sources for teaching the idea of freedom of speech. Uh, um, resources for teaching the suffrage amendments. These will be located on the left side. On the right side, you'll find teaching activities that you can share with your students as well. So for example, clicking on suffrage amendments, we'll find not only examples of those amendments, but also petitions uh, related to those amendments as they went worked through Congress and, and went to the states. Another resource I wanna point out are resources for document analysis. So if we click menu, resources, document analysis, you will find PDF versions of the National Archives Analyzing Documents worksheets. We have two different sets of worksheets, one for novice or younger students or those learning English and one for intermediate or secondary students. We have different worksheets for the different types of primary sources your students may encounter. So for example, if we click on photograph, we'll open up a PDF that shows the four different sets of questions our worksheets walk students through, meeting the document, observing its parts, trying to make sense of it, and using it as historical evidence. 
going back to the analyzing documents page, you can also find these same questions available as a tool on Docs Teach. This is our analyzing documents tool. I want to show you quickly how these same questions appear uh, on Docs Teach in the teaching activity and how you can quickly create an analyzing documents activity to share with your students. So for example, here is a child labor photograph. This is the teacher page with information for you on how to facilitate the activity. Clicking start activity takes us to the URL you would share with your students to complete an activity. Students do not need a Docs Teach account to complete an activity. Now, as we scroll down, we see a photograph as well as those same document analysis questions we saw on the PDF worksheets. So students would enter their responses into these fields. And at the end, they would type in your, their name, your email address associated with your Docs Teach account, their final response, and send their response for you to review uh, in Docs Teach. Now, future sessions will cover how to assign and review student work in Docs Teach, but I wanted to show how these worksheets are available in this activity tool. Let's say you want to take one of the primary sources you find and pop it into this analyzing documents activity. Well, let's go back to my account, my documents. Let's take a look at a photo I saved earlier from a World War I search. And I'm going to go ahead and click the plus sign to add this act to create a new activity and put documents in it. Then to find that activity, I'll go to menu, my account, my activities. Here's the activity I've just created. We can see it's not published because it's a brand new activity I've just started. If I click edit and manage activity, I'll, I'll now be able to go through the steps of setting up this activity. I'm just going to quickly show how this works. Uh, and then we have lots of additional instructions that walk you through in a step-by-step -step process on Docs Teach. But basically, you'll want to choose that analyzing documents as the activity type. You'll want to do a student title and a teacher title. They can be the same. You'll also see an opportunity for you to decide how you want to be attributed, uh, how you want to attribute yourself to this activity. And this is where you'll publish it uh, to Docs Teach or not. Now, if you'd like students to be able to submit their responses online, uh, you will need to publish your activity. But right now, since we're working on it, we're not going to publish it yet. Then you'll want to save early and often. And you'll see instructions on what you'll need to do to complete this activity all outlined right there for you. We'll go through these tabs to go through the different steps. You can choose if you just want your document available or if you want the document and background information available. There's a setup option where you can decide if you crop the document or if you use the full image in this activity. We go to analysis questions. This is where you'll choose the level. So if you want those questions for younger students or if you want the intermediate or secondary students, you'll choose the document type to make sure you pull up the correct set of questions. So we'll choose photograph. Click Save. And then from here, we'll see those same questions that we saw in the uh, example of the activity we looked at on the document analysis worksheets. You can now add additional questions, uh, remove questions. You can customize them from this point uh, to suit your students' needs. Then, of course, we'll save. Uh, the next steps would be filling out additional instructions for students on that student page. Uh, previewing the activity, you can add some instructions for teachers on how to facilitate this activity, tag the historical era, thinking skill, Bloom's taxonomy level, and grade level this activity corresponds to. And then when you're ready, you can publish it. From there, you'll be able to share the URL, the student URL with your students. They can go through, go through that same process of answering those questions uh, in Docs Teach, entering your email address associated with their account, and submitting their responses once your activity has been published. You can always find your activity on the My Activities page. Oh, if you need to take a break and not work on the entire thing in the whole time. So here it's not published yet, but we have the option to edit and manage the activity. And if it was ready to go, we could click on this link to open up the activity. So that's just a really quick overview of how once you find primary sources you want to share with your students, you can use the Analyzing Documents activity tool on Docs Teach to quickly share these activities with your students. 
And then to review their responses, you'd be able to find them under my account, my students' responses. Well, the next step is to get started. Start doing some searches. Uh, you're going to find lots of primary sources for teaching U.S. history and civics topics. And if you find something cool, let us know. You can always let us know on Twitter at DocsTeach.